Okay, so let's start. So we have a test uh, on Tuesday, and I have extended the homework. So homework is due today. I think I did. I don't know. Maybe it's for the other class. Well, anyway, if you need an extension for the homework, just let me know. I just want to go back to... Oh, yeah, but if I do that, I'm going to lose... I just want to go back to Kirchhoff rules because that's what you're going to use to solve more complex circuits. So, for example, here you have, let's say you have, let's say you have like a 12 volt power supply, and and then say here you have a load here, and then you have another load here, and let's say you have another load here. So very, very simple circuit. What you have to understand is that you decide which way the current goes. And if at the end you find a negative current, that means it's flowing in the other direction. So it's arbitrary. But once you're going to solve a circuit, it, it doesn't matter. If you find a negative current, like if I, obviously in that case it's easy, the current always goes from plus to minus, but you, you could have decided to do in this direction and then you find a negative current when you apply Kirchhoff's law, right? So I, someone asked me a, a question and, and so I want to make sure that it's clear. So for example, let's say you have something like this. This is um, a load here and you have five volt here and you have four volt here. So you have three volts here, right? And the way I like to do it is this way. So you have a load here, and then you have another load, and then you have another load here, and then it goes to ground. So here, if you lose five volt, and that's maybe I was not clear with that. So you take this to be the ground here. So if you if you lose five volt. That means there is 7 volt left between this point and that point, right? So this, if this is the point A and this is the point B, so then VA minus VB equals 7 volt. Because you have to think of that as an altitude, right? And then, of course, from 7, it's going to lose here 4 volt. Right? So now you have only 3 volt left, and here you're losing 3 volt. So you have to think that as altitude. Now, the current always flows from high altitude to low altitude, or high potential to low potential. So that's why we do Kirchhoff flow. You can think that between here and there, this is the ground here, and then you boost. It's like a pump system like a, a pumping system like like uh, water it's like you have a reservoir of water here and then here you have a pump here and you bring the water to a high level of energy which is potential energy and and then here you are using that energy to do some work and you go back to zero so that's why we use kirchhoff flow it works exactly the same way so here you are boosting so when you are going from ground or minus, minus means ground, it means that here it's 12 higher than here, 12 joule higher per coulomb than here. So that's why I like to connect the minus to the ground, it's easier, you know, especially if you work with a circuit in a building, there is no minus side, there is the ground, the ground is the minus side. So you boost here, so you go up 12, so you go up 12 plus 12, right? So you go plus 12 volt, and as you go with the current, you lose, okay? You're going to lose minus 5 and minus 4 and minus 3, and you got 0. So this is called Kirchhoff flow for voltage. That only works if you have no uh, magnetic field or inductor involved. It's not going to work for electromagnetism.
but it works when electricity is static, when electricity does not change in time. So that's the idea. Okay, I wanted to make that clear. And then the other thing that I want to go over is, uh, let's see, I, I want to go over that, which is a practice test. I, I have postponed the practice test to next week. I don't know why it was due this week. So some people ask me to postpone the test. No, I won't because then you have a test three coming up and we have a lot of things to cover. But you have a practice test and, and the test is only 20 questions, multiple choices, plus conceptual questions. So here, that's that's part of your assignment. No, I think it's one, one problem in the practice test. And, and for the test, you're going to have one like this, not exactly like this, I forgot, but well, that, that kind of problems here. So the first thing you do, you, you decide like when you have no junction here, so there is no connection, so you, you know that the current is going to flow here, it's going to be the same current here because it's the same pipe. Then here you have a connection, so you have two different pipes, okay? So that's one single pipe, so the current here will be the same, here the current will be the same, and here the current will be the same until you find a connection. So first you decide which way you want the current to flow. So I'm going to call that I1, okay, and I2, uh, I1, sorry, because it's one pipe. Doesn't matter if it makes a right angle here, it's still I1. And then here I'm going to say this is I3. Now, if I find I3 to be negative, so then that means that I3 is flowing in the opposite direction. So it's one pipe here. And then you see here you have I2, I2 flowing, I2. And each time a current goes through a load, current is like water, so it always flows from high potential to low potential. So I'm losing, I'm losing voltage, like you are losing, you are losing, um, you are using height. So the, usually the first thing you want to do is using Kirchhoff flow for current. I don't know why it's called Kirchhoff flow. I'm pretty sure Kirchhoff has nothing to do with that. But I2, you see, is I, I1 equals I2 plus I3. That's easy. You know, whatever comes in has to come out. It's like water flowing. It's conservation of charge. So there is nothing special into that. And then here, I'm going to go around that loop here. And this is a 10. It looks like a 20, but it's a 10. So I'm, I'm going to go from here, from that point, I'm going to go around and go back to here. So I'm going to go around, OK? So I go through that load, and you see, because I'm going with the flow, I'm losing. So I'm going to do minus 10 I1. OK? And then here, I go for minus to plus, so I'm, I'm boost, I get a boost, right? So I, I'm going to put plus 10. That's my power supply, I get a boost. I'm going against the electric field. Okay, so that means the electric field wants the charge plus, remember current are made of pluses charge, so the electric field always wants to go and, and lower the level of energy. So it's like you are doing work against the electric field. It's just a review. Remember, the, the electric field goes this way if you want. So here you have chemical reaction inside your power supply that would do work against the electric field. It's like having a pump or a machine that take a mass and do work against gravity, right, to increase the level of energy. So I'm increasing the level of energy. I'm doing work against uh, the electric field. 
If I go this way, boom, 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 boom. And then here, so I'm, I have to finish my loop. Here I'm going again with the flow. So again, I'm losing. So 10 I3. And here I go from minus to plus. So I do a plus 15. Now, I, I could have gone the opposite way. If I go the opposite way, here you are losing 15 because you go from high to low. And then you go against the stream. So you, you will have done plus 10 times I3 because, you know, you're, it's, it's like the salmon, right? The salmon, uh, the flow goes this way. The salmon move those this way to die upstream. So if you go upstream, you go up, you increase, right? So that will be equation two. And then hopefully I didn't do any mistake. And then equation three, I'm, I'm gonna go around this way. Oh, I can go around that way, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna go this way. So from plus to minus, so that's going to be minus 15. See, plus to minus, minus 15. I go against the flow. So that means I'm going to do plus 10 I3. And here I go with the flow. So that's going to be minus 10 I2 minus 10 I2, and here I go also uh, 10, minus 10 I2 again. Is that clear? Now, your book doesn't do it this way. There is another way to do it, okay? Your book, and, and when you do more complicated circuit, maybe you want to do it with your books. You, you have a loop here and a loop there, so I invite you. I like your book, you know, the book, especially if you get it through the campus, you have tutorial, you have videos, you have demonstrations, so it's very nice. You have equation one, two, three. And then it's up to you if you want to use your TI or not, right? So you have, I'm, I'm going to show you how to use your TI, but of course you don't have to. You can, you can do substitution, you can do addition. You go back to high school, you know, remember how we, uh, you, you learned that. So I'm going to arrange. Uh, so my my unknown, unknown, I, I1, I2, I3. So it's like X, Y, Z. I'm going to put everything on one side for the X, Y, Z. So I1 minus I2 minus I3 equals zero. Second equation. I have an I1 here, so I have a minus 10 I1. I2 I don't have, so I put a plus 0. And I3 I have, so minus I3. And I'm going to put the 15 on the other side. I have a 15 and a 10. So 15 plus 10 is 25. On the other side, it's going to be minus 25. And then my third equation here, so I1, I, I don't see any, so there is no I1, so I put a 0. I2, I have to combine like terms, so minus 10 and minus 10 is minus 20, so I'm going to put minus 20 I2. And then I have a 10, 10 I3, so 10 I3. Uh, 10 I3 is here, and this one goes to the other side equals 15. And then it's it's up to you if you uh, if you um, if you want to use a TI or you can use whatever you use. But if you look at the matrix here, if you want to use the TI, you look at the coefficient. So the coefficient here is 1 minus 10 0. And then you have a minus 1, so minus 1, 0, minus 20. And then I3, you have minus 1 and minus 10. 
and then there is a plus here and 10 and then the 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 coefficient so that would be for the coefficient and here you have 0 minus 25 15 is that clear? And if you are really good at uh, algebra 2, I forgot how to do it, but there is a way to do it, you gauss and whatever. The goal is to have a diagonal here. If you make it diagonal, if you have a 1, 1, and a 1, and a 0, and a 0, and a 0, whatever you find here will be the final answers. Yeah. I remember I taught it because I taught algebra too, but I absolutely forget to do it, and I don't see the point to do it since you can use your TI. But if you lack math, you know, you don't have to do it the way I'm doing it. You can do substitution. You can do a Gauss method. I forgot what it's called. So if you do your TI, you take your TI, and you go to second x to the minus 1, so that will be the matrix. Your TI can do all kinds of stuff, including computing derivative and integral and solving equations, all kinds of things. So you go to edit. So go to edit here. I'm going to call that matrix A, but of course it could be matrix B. So you, have, you can solve a lot of stuff here. You can add matrix, you know, you can... You can reverse matrix. There is all those equations you can do if you take a linear algebra. If you are in engineering, they will have you will have to do that. Um, so okay, so here you put the number of rows. So you have three rows and four colon. Okay, and then you put your coefficient. I did that already. So you have one minus one minus one zero. Okay, so that's good. Minus 25, minus 10, 0, and minus 10, that's good, 0, minus 20, 10, and 15. So we're good. So then you go second mode to quit. Maybe there is an easiest way to take the shortcut, but I don't know them. So I go the long way. So matrix, and then you want to do the math. And you see, there is all kind of math that you can use for your other class. You can find the determinant. You, you can uh, find the augmented matrix, whatever it's, it is, I forget. But you go to here. That, that will solve your problem, uh, which is R, R, F. And you, you go enter. So then you have to tell your TI that you are using ma matrix A. Yeah, because you, you remember you have many many matrices so you have to name it so you go back to matrix here and you say okay I am interested in matrix A so you go enter so you have your matrix A but by the way I don't have to do that you see I have like that I can I could have entered my matrix A using this and and there is an A somewhere I don't know where is the A so I don't know well, I do it this way. And um, okay, um, and then we find the answer. So the answer is 1.2 minus 0 0.1 and 1.3. You see, it's a diagonal matrix. There, there is a way, there is a methodology to get diagonal. Just don't know. I don't know how to do it. So I1 equals 1.2 A. I2 equals minus 0.1 A. And I3 equals 1.3 A. So that's the solution. Now, what does it mean I2 is negative? It means that actually I2 is flowing in the opposite direction. So I can fix that. You don't have to fix it, okay? Because unless they ask you which way it's flowing, you don't have to fix it. Because when you're going to find VB minus VA, you have to be consistent. If you keep I2 flowing this way, even though it's flowing in the other direction, 
then when you're going to find VB minus VA, you have to take I2 to be negative. Now, if I can fix that, I, I can erase that and put the real direction and put I2 equals 0 0.1 amp. But you have to be consistent, whatever you're doing. Okay, so I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to go. And uh, I want to find V bay, VB minus V. Actually, I want to find VA minus VB, but it's fine. And you, you can do that. You can start from here and go this way, or you can start from here, go that way. I'm, I want to start from here. Now, after, maybe I will do it the other way. So I start from here. So that will be a, a potential B. Potential B, meaning it's like the altitude above ground, okay? Wherever ground is. So I start from here, and I want to go to VA, because I want to know the difference in altitude between point B and point A. So I start from VB. I start from here. And then I go with the flow. So I do minus 10. But then I2 here, I have to be consistent, is minus 0 0.1. That's because in reality, I2 is flowing in the other direction. Okay, so I start from here, boom, I'm losing. This is just a wire, so I'm not doing anything here. And then I go to point A, and you see I go with the flow, so that's going to be minus 10, and I1 is 1.2. And where do I get? I get to VA. Okay, so it's very much like altitude. Okay, I'm losing, boom, boom, there is nothing to lose because there is no load. I'm losing, I'm getting to VA. So you have VB, uh, that's going to be a plus 1. That's going to be a minus 12 equals VA. So that's VB minus 11 equals VA. And there was a mistake, there was a mistake that I fixed. But you see that the answer, okay, VB minus VA equals 11, but VA minus VB is minus 11. So final answer, VB minus VA equals 11 volt. That, that's what I did in my tutorial. But actually, here they are asking you the opposite. So VA minus VB equals minus 11 volt. OK? So I took you step by step, and I think it could be useful for you for another class, you know, how to use your TI. Uh, but you'd, again, you don't have to do that. And now, your book has a different way to solve stuff, so it does it a different way. So you have a load here, and then you have a load here, and then you have a load here, and then go here. So they do something like this. That will be I, and then they go like this, I2, I1, I2. But then, then when you go through that branch, you have to combine I1 I1 and I2. So it's a diff I'm not going to do it, but it's a different way to do it. Now, if I want to do it right, like here, then I can fix that because actually the, the current is flow flowing in the other direction. So that will be what really is happening. I'm going to call that I2 prime because I2 prime is 0 0.1 amp. So the current is really flowing in this direction. By the way, you see that it makes sense because the plus is here. Plus means push, so push, pushing this way, and then pushing that way. And you have a plus here, so pushing this way. So it makes sense, kind of consistent. If it's, if it's not plus here, it's the minus, so it means it depends which one is winning. Remember, when you have a minus and a minus with a power supply, it's... Uh, destroying each other. Is that clear?
Okay, so then we move to um, capacitors. So in the, in the 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 curriculum that I have to follow by the department, you know, I'm told that capacitors charging and discharging are optional. So I'm skipping it. But if you are in physics, you know, if you if your major is physics or anything electronics, you can you can uh, go over it, charging and discharging capacitors. But I just want to give you like a gut feeling of how capacitors work. Of course, we we did capacitor, right? But we didn't do the, the, the charging and discharging. So capacitors, of course, are very important in electronics. It's, it's everywhere. And let's, let's just do that in a nutshell. If you have a power supply and you have an ohmic component like a resistance, so remember capacitors, inductors, semiconductors, they, they don't behave like a resistance. But if you have a resistance here, and let's say you have a switch here, at t equals zero, you close the switch. And let's say you have a voltage, 12 volt. What's going to happen here? Right away, you're going to have 12 volt. Okay, there is no delay. So it means if I look at the resistance, uh, the voltage across the resistance as a function of time, it's very quick. It's like a linear, I mean, vertical line. And then it's going to be 12 volt. Okay, so there is no fight. The resistance is very obedient. So it's like a, it's following. So it's, it just follow whatever power supply you have here. Now, if if your voltage from the power supply is a sine function, the resistance again is a very obedient component. It just follow. You say, yes, sir, I do what you say, and it's following. Uh, maybe maybe the voltage, of course, is going to be, it depends of overload, but it's basically it's following. Now, a capacitor doesn't behave like this. A capacitor likes to fight. What does it fight? It, it's fighting voltage. So that means that Let's say you have your 12 volt, and now you have your component capacitor. So it's just, uh, so in that case, remember that the energy that you provide goes into heat, okay? So all that energy here is used. Let's review for the test. The power is V times I or Ri squared. So it depends on the current square. So everything is lost to heat. In a capacitor, in an ideal world, uh, the, the, there is no heat, ideally. All, all that energy is going to be stored inside the electric field. So the electric field is a way to store energy, but it's a fighter. It doesn't like it, you know, it doesn't want to build the voltage quickly. So... What's going to happen is that at t equals zero, and that will be for test three, okay? Not test two. Capacitors like this, like those conceptual questions will be maybe for pop quiz next Thursday, but or test three, that will be online, but it's not in test two. So at t, everything happens like the capacitor, you can replace it just by a wire. So if you have a wire, the voltage here is going to be zero volt. Okay, so at t equals zero, you can replace your capacitor by just a wire because it's fighting. You know, no, I don't want to go to 12 volt, right? So if you are looking at the capacitor voltage, the the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time, when you close the switch, it doesn't want to go. It's resisting. You know, no, 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 no. I don't want. And then as the time goes by, okay, you insist. Okay, I'm I'm gonna build voltage, you know, but step by step, 
charge after charge and I'm going to take my time, you know. And then at t equals long enough, then the fight is over, which means that everything happens like the capacitor here. You can replace it by you can replace it by um, you can replace your capacitor when it's very 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 long. You can replace it by an open switch because now the voltage here is going to be 12 volt. But as it's charging, so here you have 12 volt, but as it's going to charge, the voltage across the capacitor is going to look something like this. Okay, So that's called charging a capacitor because it doesn't want to go straight up. It takes its time. It's resisting. It's fighting. And then when it's totally charged, then you remember we have capacitance is the voltage. It, it's the charge per unit voltage. So if you wait long enough, then yes, you're going to have a Q here, a minus Q, and all your energy is the inside the electric field here. So you have all the energy inside the electric field, but it takes it takes some time. How long it takes depends on the capacitance, of course, you know, the, the geometry, how many charges you can put inside. And if you have a resistance in there, of course, it's going to take more time. So if you are doing electricity here, there is like a... Mm -hmm. What? Because when it's fully charged, when it's fully charged, that means the, the voltage across the capacitor is going to be exactly 12 volt. So the voltage is going to increase, increase, increase until you get 12 volt. So once it's fully charged, you, you will have something like this. You have plus Q, minus Q, that will be the maximum charge you can have. And here you have your 12 volt, and there is no more current flowing, I equals zero, because you have all those pluses here and all those minus here, so you, you cannot put more. You know, they are repelling each other. In between them, you're going to have an electric field going from plus to minus. So all that energy, that because you are doing work, each time you put a plus here, you know, it's getting hard and it's getting harder and it's getting harder. So now if you measure the voltage here, yeah, so if you have a voltmeter, you're going to find 12, 12 volt. So it means the current cannot flow anymore. It's full. Yeah, you, see, you see like uh, when you eat a big steak, like meat, like if you are on keto, for example, you eat a lot of fat and a lot of meat, and then you're full. And here it's so full that no charge can flow. So there is no more current, right? So the current cannot flow. And this is happening like you have an open switch, because if you have an open switch here, current cannot flow. So at t equals zero, the capacitor is very saying no, you know? And, and it, everything happens like you have just a wire, so the current can flow. So at t equals zero, the current can flow, it's maximum. And then as the, the time pass by, you put one charge, okay, easy. Two charge, still easy. Three charge, and then you have to fight, and you have to push, and you have to do work, because all those pluses, they repel the other one, right? So as you have to do work, each time you are doing work, you are storing energy. And where is that energy going inside the electric field? Which is very convenient because that means you can use capacitor as a battery, as a way to, char to, to store uh, voltage or store charge. So when you have a memory in your computer, I think the RAM, 
memory you have to check it's like small capacitors one zero one one zero one one zero and then you turn off your computer and everything is gone okay so for what's going coming up um and and for the pop quiz next thursday at t equals very big t there is no more charge flowing there is no more current and you can replace your capacitor by an open switch at t equals zero you just close current is flowing and you can replace your capacitor by a wire and then you have in between so this this is a very cool physics i love that chapter but uh, it's not required so i'm not doing it because we have to we still have a lot of things to do but if you have ac here so ac something like this your capacitor is going to be behind okay so it, it's going to be like it's you you're going to have a 90 degree shift if if there is no resistance so it's like lagging behind because it's fighting against you is that clear if so that would be the voltage so capacitor fight voltage and likewise if you now discharge your capacitor so it means like this is charged so what you do you you take a eraser you remove your power supply okay capacitor is still happy it's going to hold on its charge okay that's what the capacitor do that's why they can kill you they can be deadly because if you have a big capacitor and you use your fingers to discharge it, it's going to go through your heart, maybe. Okay, capacitors can be very, very dangerous. But if I if I open here and I put a resistance here, it's going to discharge through the resistance. So the voltage is going to go to zero. So that's called discharge. But instead of going straight down, it's going to take its time. It's an exponential decay. Okay, I'm taking my time. I'm going down, but don't push me. You know, I don't. I like to take my time. So it's going to be discharging into the resistance, and all that energy stored in the electric field will be uh, in into heat. Is that clear? So it's really in a nutshell. So I, if if you are going into electricity or if you are in a physics physics major, I I recommend that you do that. I mean, I'm sure you, you did that. In, did you do it for the lab or are you going to do it for the lab? But you will do it. Is that part of the lab? Charging, discharging. So the current here does the same, the opposite. So the current as a function of time, when you close the switch, the current is very big because it's like it's not there. And then little by little, it's going to decrease. After a very big time, it, it's full. You cannot take it anymore, so there is no more current. So the current does this. It's an exponential decay. Okay? So it's a nutshell. Uh, let's see. So capacitors in a nutshell... When you have two capacitors in parallel, you see that parallel circuit, you know, the, for the resistance, you decrease the resistance. But for capacitors, you increase the capacitor. So it's like you have two beakers, you combine them together, and now you have more capacitance. So when two capacitors are in parallel, like this, you add the charges. So instead of, have, let's say you have Q1 here, Q2 there, everything happens like you could replace your two branches by one. So we call that the equivalent capacitor. And that equivalent capacitor, you, 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 you add the capacitance. So it's the charge that can be stored, can be Q1 and Q2, minus q1 minus q2 you can 
kind of see it here. You have Q1 here and Q2 here. So it makes sense that from the point of view of your power supply, it doesn't have eyes. All your power supply knows is that there is a Q2 here or Q1 and there is a Q2 here. From the point of view of your power supply, everything happens like you have Q1 plus Q2. Does it make sense? Yeah, you, you don't have to do uh, physics, advanced physics or whatever. You, it kind of makes sense in your guts. So you add the capacitance. So if you want to do horrible experiment with ultra capacitors, all you have to do is to take big capacitors, you put them in parallel. You don't even need a high voltage. You can use a 9 volt battery, charge those capacitors, it's going to take maybe a few hours, so it's going to take long, but then you're going to store insane amount of energy and you can melt a nail or a penny, you know, you can have fun with that, but you can also be electrocuted, so you have to be very careful. Now, when capacitors are in a series, it's going to be the opposite. You are lowering the, the capacitor. So, first of all, the charge will have to be the same on each of them. It makes sense because you have minus Q here, you have plus Q here. Why does it make sense? Because you see that you have more charge here than here, then it will flow. So they have to balance each other. So in that case, from the point of view of the power supply, everything happens like you have a capacitor, but the, the capacitance is lower. So you use that equation that we use for the resistance in parallel. So 1 over 1 CQ equals 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 and so forth and so on. That's, that's how it works. Okay? Okay, so let's do one which is easy. Let's find the equivalent resistance. Uh, no, 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 sorry. Equivalent uh, capacitor. Okay. So try to do it. It's, it's, so here you have one branch. And here, okay, so don't, don't be fooled here. It's not because it makes a corner. It's not because it makes a right angle that it's a junction. That's not a junction, okay? I, I could have done that. It would be the same thing. Uh, no, like this. No, no, no. No, I say no. The, the only thing that will be on this test is the solving complex circuit like I did at the beginning, right? No, but capacitors are on the test like the one, like in the practice test. Capacitor, like finding capacitance if, if the plates are parallel, blah, blah, blah. That's on the test. Uh, no, because I need to cover my, uh, I have to move to the next unit, I'm already behind. But I, I have the practice test. Practice test is exactly what's going to be on the test. So on the test, you're going to have everything after Gauss law until capacitors here, those kind of problems not including. So I, I'm stopping here. I stop here. That's, that's just blah, blah. Okay, I'm stopping here. After Gauss law to here. So it's going to be voltage, finding voltage. Oh, what else? Finding uh, the capacitance. And then power and resistance, equivalent resistance. And, and I have postponed the... Um, uh, practice test. So it's going to be very much like the practice test, except that you, you might have also conceptual questions, like I do in class. Okay? Now, if you want to come for office hours, I'm available after this class. Okay, so these are in 
parallèle. Right? So if they are in parallel, you add them up. So you can replace that by what? To see. And then now you have in series, right? So you have a C and a 2C and another C. But they are in series. So then you have to do the, the equation uh, 1 over C plus 1 over C plus 1 over 2C. So I don't know. So it's, it's going to be 1 and 1. So 2 over C plus 1 over 2C. Is that right or I did a mistake? You put at the same denominator. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 over 2C, which is 5 over 2C. So it's going to be 2 fifth C. Is that right? Ah, uh, 2 fifth. So 2 fifth is 0 0.4. Because one fifth is zero point two. Yeah. Okay, so here it looks hard, so that will be for another pop quiz on the next Thursday. Yeah, I'm kind of behind, but well what you know what they say, it's not what you cover, it's what you uncover. After a very long time, what is the current? And here we are reviewing for the test, in a way. And a long time, that means what? You replace C by what? Open switch, right? Okay, now you close it. You close, you close here and you wait for a long time. After a long time, you see you're going to have current flowing. So first it's going to flow through the capacitor. And, and then as time goes by, it's, you're going to have more resistance here. So it's going to go flow through this way. Yeah. So you open here. So after a long time, you see here there is no current flowing. So there is no voltage drop here. So the current can only flow through here. So it's going to be epsilon over R. OK? Won't, won't be that. It's not complicated. Okay, so when you just close the switch, remember, it's the opposite. So when you just close the switch, you can replace the capacitor by a wire, right? So I close, of course, I'm going to close this switch. But at t equals 0, everything happens like there is a wire here. Okay, why? Because there, 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 is, um, there is no voltage drop here at t equals zero, okay? Because it's, it's fighting, okay? I don't want your voltage, you know? Just replace it by a switch. So what's going to be... Um, sh 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 so, yeah, I think so, because the, everything happens like you have... Two resistance in parallel, you're going to have R over 2 because you have two branches. So the current will be voltage divided by current. So you see we are reviewing. So it's 2 epsilon over R. Right? So because it's epsilon, I mean it's the EMF R over 2. So you are uh, dividing by your fraction, multiplying by the reciprocal.
right? So remember for the, I, I forgot if it's a conceptual question or not, but if you have a circuit in parallel, the equivalent resistance is always lower than the lowest one. And if you have a circuit in series, the equivalent resistance is larger than the larger one. Okay? So see, we are reviewing. Okay, so here, okay, so what's going to happen after a long time? You can replace your capacitor by open switch. So what's going to be um, the re equivalent resistance? 3R, 3R, right? Because here it's open. Okay, so you go from here, boom, 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 boom. I keep going, pom, 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 pom. So it will be 3R. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, let's let's try to answer the question. All right, look, you, we are almost reviewing. So after a long time, everything happened. Like you have just the R and 2R. And here you have an open switch. So the current is only flowing in this direction, yes? So they want to find the voltage across the capacitor. So you, you want to find the voltage here. So that my voltmeter, I want to find the voltage across here because my capacitor is here. Everything is behaving like an open switch. So I'm looking for the voltage between A and B. Is that clear? But remember, like we did voltage divider. So it's like you have a V here. You have a R. And by the way, you don't have to do it this way, of course. I. So if you want to find the voltage here, that's where your vo uh, capacitor was. You remember the voltage divider? I'm, I'm going to put that V in, and that's going to be V out. So V out is to V in what 2R is to 3R. So V out is 2 third of V in. And of course, you don't have to do it this way. Of course, you can use Ohm's law. Is that clear? But you can use a, um, you, you can use a Ohm's law. And you see, you have more resistance. That means more voltage. Remember that Ohm's law says that V equals Ri. Here, the same current flow. So if R is bigger, so V is going to be also bigger. Okay, so if R is multiplied by 2, the voltage across is going to be also multiplied by 2. That's Ohm's law. You have the same current here. Okay, you don't have to do it this way. Okay, you can do it the long way. I'm taking my time today, but you can take the long way. You can say everything happens like you are replacing everything with 3R. Because they are in series. So I, the current, is V. So V in divided by 3R. Could do it this way. So when you are finding the voltage here, you use Ohm's law, so V equals the resistance 2R divided by the current, and you get the same thing. Huh? It's just a shortcut. It's called the voltage divider. It's to go faster, but if you want to go for the long run, you can do that too. 
Okay. Any questions so far? And uh, in the drop box, by the way. Okay, let's let's try to do this one. In in the drop box, I have saved all the assignment. Okay, I'm just missing the last one. I have to do that today. So this this is a tricky. I mean, it looks once you don't if you don't know how it works, it looks tricky, but. They connect. Uh, they, they connect a capacitor here between A and B. And and the capacitor is charged with 12 volts. So it means you you have a 12 volt, and you charge your capacitor to 12 volts. So after a while, your capacitor is here. You know you disconnect here, and it's going to be 12 volt. And then you connect it here. So things gonna happen. You, you're gonna have a fight between the six volt here and maybe the 12 volt here. But after a while, after a very long time, it doesn't matter. Everything happened, it's gonna be like an open switch. So now I have an open switch here. Is that clear? So it doesn't matter what happens in between. You don't need to do the math. Okay, because after a while, all the capacitor is going to be this. Um, after, after a while, the, the capacitor here is not discharged, but it's going to be. Like an open switch, so it, it's 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 going to after a very long time, everything happens is like an open switch. So then you can find the current. OK. So that's an easy question. Um, oh, that, that's that's the math. Charging capacitor, discharging capacitor. That's you, you see, you have an exponential decay and charging, but we are not doing that. So. Any questions so far? Uh, What was the answer? I I lost the thing. So it's it you 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 find it. I think it's six divided by how much is the resistance? Yeah. Okay, so we start a new unit. It's going to be a magnetism. Any question? Um, where is my new, 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 new? No, no, no. Uh, what I want. No, I don't want that. I want to go. I want to open a PDF. So we start a new unit. And we start with magnetism. Okay, so magnet you are all familiar with. So that will be the magnet. It's called the bar magnet. You, I'm sure you play or you have played with magnet. A magnet always has a north pole and a south pole. 
And what's surprising about magnet is that you cannot have a monopole. So typical pop quiz question, can you have a monopole with magnet? No, it, you always have two poles. Now, if tomorrow you go for a walk, you know, after this class, and you see a magnetic monopole, then you get instantaneously a Nobel Prize because they keep look, looking for a North Pole on its own or a South Pole on its own, and, and it doesn't exist. It's a North Pole always comes with a South Pole, which is different than electricity because uh, electrostatic, remember that in electrostatic, you can have a monopole, right? So if you have a plus charge on its own here, yeah, that's called the monopole. And you remember the electric field was flowing out, out, I don't know if it's a question on, on the test or not, but magnetic field, uh, an electric field is always out uh, positive. So it's always diverging. And you can have a minus on its own and the electric field comes in. So inward, and then you can even combine the plus and the minus, and you get what is called a dipole, an electric dipole. And then you have the electric field that goes from plus to minus. The goal of the electric field, remember, is to lower the potential of energy, right? So for example, in that case here, far away, you have the ground. So the electric field is trying to convince the plus to go to the ground. And here it's the opposite, right? Yeah. No, you 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 have like um, does it have to be solid? It depends if it's a permanent magnet or not. So, for example, if you if you take uh, oh, so it it okay. So it's a good question. Inside the plasma, you're gonna have magnetic field lines. Yes, so you can have magnetic field lines inside the plasma, but it's it's not solid and it's not a magnet. So it means that if if you have, like for example, if you have in inside the Earth, we're gonna see that inside the Earth you you have a core, and you have an outer core, and you have the mantle, and you have the lithosphere. Inside the outer core, you have a fluid that is flowing. So you, you're going to have a magnetic field lines going this way. So we're going to see that. OK, so here I'm just talking about permanent magnet. So it means that if you have a solid magnet and you break it in two, so it's easy to break magnet, you just rub them, it's, you're going to have still a south and the north. It's very weird. So it means like if I take this and I break it and people think, okay, here it's going to be a south. That was the south and that was the north. No. Even if I break it in two, that's going to be still the south. But here all of a sudden it's going to be a north. And if I break it, this, is, this was the north and I'm going to have the south. And if I break that in two, I'm going to have still a south here, a north, a north, and a south. So you cannot have a monopole. You cannot have a magnetic monopole. You, you, you can have an electric monopole, but not a magnetic monopole. So we, we're going to discuss that. So here, for example, you have a shoe, not a shoe, horse. <laughs> horseshoe magnet. This is the north and this is the south. And it's very, very strong. You can have magnetic field. So we're going to talk about magnetic field. But north and south attract, north and north repel. So you all know that. The, the word magnet comes from Magnesia, which is uh, an area in Greece where people were familiar with those minerals. The, the mineral here, those rocks, they are natural magnets. They are magnet, solid magnet, but you find in the ground. 
if you take an earth science class, you know, they, you, you, you can see, I mean, you, you can manipulate them. So they are permanent magnet and um, they are called magnetite or loader stone. That's their other name. So it was used back then by, by, by na people who, who nav navigate by the Chinese and by, by the Greek, you know, has a compass to, to show the geographic north. So that's what the name magnet comes from. The first one to write a book about magnetism and to understand interesting things about magnet is this guy, What's his name? William Gilbert, right? He's the first one, I mean, to write at least a book. Interestingly, he was a contemporary of Kepler and Galileo, and he was a physician of Queen Elizabeth I. She died soon after, so I don't know if he was a good physician or not, but he, she gave him, she, she, she was... Um, very uh, supportive of science. So she, she gave him money and, and to pursue his work on, on science. And he, he, he got, he's the one that says, for example, that you can, you can magnetize iron. Iron, it's not a magnet, but you, if you take a magnet and you can, you, you keep going, rubbing and rubbing and rubbing the, the iron, for example, it's going to become a magnet. Now, by digging more, so that was in the 16th century, this is a very famous queen, right? Elizabeth I, you heard about her. You know what's, what her dad is famous for? The, the dad of Elizabeth I? Do you know his name? You don't know? It's very... I love the British history. It's very interesting. His name was Henry VIII. You know what's so special about Henry VIII? Okay, no, not all of them. A few of them. So the first one, the first wife, he didn't like. He didn't have choice, okay, because his brother was supposed to be the king. And the brother died, so he had to marry his sister-in-law, but she was much older. So he went for a while, and then she got old, and then he fell in love with someone else. So he divorced. But there was a problem at the time, right? Because Catholics... Exactly, because Catholics cannot divorce, right? So he had to change the religion, so he became Protestant. <laughs> so that's why he could divorce his first wife. And he married a much younger, much beautiful wife. But apparently, I don't know what happened with her. Maybe she was cheating on him. You know, he had, by that time, he was much older. So what did he do to this wife? He killed, killed her. Right? That wife was Jane Seymour, and she was the mom of Elizabeth I. So in England, they have the saying, divorce, be hated, died, she died, the third wife died, and then, and then divorce again, be hated, survive, right? Is that right? You are in history? You, you are? You are in history? Your, your, your major is history? You took it? So it's great, right? So there is a song. It's like a divorce, be hated, Die, be, be, okay, okay, let's go back to physics, sorry. Okay, so let's go back to physics. Um, so I have a very great... simulation, if I can find it. No, no, no. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so here you have a mar bar magnet, and the thing to understand about magnetic field is that magnetic field always circulate, right? So it goes from north to south. So I don't know if I have another pictures here. It's not the pictures are not great because you, you don't see, but here you can visualize the magnetic field. Magnetic field even exists inside your bar magnet. Magnetic field circulates. So it goes from the north into the south and back then. So that's a big difference with an electric charge. If you have an electric charge and, and the electric charge is not moving, the, the electric field is outward or inward. So it does not circulate. If you take a calculus class, maybe calculus three, we, we talk about circulation. So the vector field here circulates out of the north, into the south, back in the north, into the south. Okay? So this, um, this, this app is great, except I don't see the magnetic field here, but you do have magnetic field. Okay, look at that. Here you go. Okay? The magnetic field goes out of the north into the south. And then here we have what it's called a compass. A compass is a needle and it's, it's, it's just a magnet. It's a solid magnet, right? So that will be the north and that will be the south. So if I bring the compass here, north is attracted to south. Does it make sense? And then you see that the compass is acted upon by a torque. So the magnetic field is making the compass move in such a way, and that will be a, like a pop quiz question, for example, the, the compass, the needle, is always parallel to the magnetic field. You see how it's parallel here? It's always parallel. And I can visualize the magnetic field so I could take all those little compass. You can imagine all those here are little compasses and they are showing the magnetic field lines, okay? So now you see the north. This is the south. South is attracted to north. And you see how the needle is rotating. So magnetic field always goes from north to south, south and it likes to uh, circulate. Now, if I have my planet Earth. So let me, uh, I'm, I'm cheating, but it's, it's fine. I'm not supposed to show you what is inside. So now I, I lost my Earth. Can you go back? So let me ask you something. Uh, that's the geographic North, right? You see, it's, it's showing you the north. This is the geographic north. But that's the north side of your compass. So what do you think you have here at the geographic north of the Earth? South. So the magnetic south of the Earth is at the geographic north. But everything happens, everything happens like the Earth behaves like an, a bar magnet. So everything happens like the Earth will behave like a bar magnet. And the geographic North is that the magnetic South. So the Earth here has magnetic field from the North into the South through the earth, out of the north, into the south, through the earth, right? But the geographic north is at the magnetic south. Now, this is <coughs> very important for us because the magnetic field is a shield. It's going to protect us against cosmic rays coming from the sun, coming from space. So each time you have all those mean particles, you know, 
and new, uh, not neutrons, but protons and electrons, it wants to hit the Earth, it's going to be trapped inside this magnetic field. So it's protecting us. Because, of course, we have evolved on Earth in such a way that even though we are bombarded every second, you have particles going through your brain right now, okay? You have stuff going through your brain even though you don't see it. But we have evolved in such a way that our DNA knows how to fix itself or, or commit suicide if it cannot fix itself. So we have uh, evolved in such a way. But it's better to protect ourselves, you know, not, not to be hit by all those radiations. So it's, it's like a shield. And I think I have a simulation to show you. So here what's going to happen, if you have a proton coming from the sun, for example, it's going to be trapped. And um, it, it cannot reach the Earth. Except two places. Do you see the two places where there is not much pro uh, protection? Very good. The geographic north and the geographic south. And what's going to happen here, those protons are going to go through the atmosphere, or the electrons are going through the atmosphere, burp out their energy through the air, through the atmosphere, kicking out electrons from the air molecule that are going to go to a higher level of energy. Okay, they're going to be excited. And then when they come back into orbit, they're beautiful. They burp out those beautiful light. We call that the northern light or, or Borealis, Polaris, uh, whatever, what it's called. Exactly. Right? And that's beautiful display. The only thing I don't know, I have to uh, look into that, is that are we more exposed to all those particles if we are on the Earth? Yes. But two studies show that more people are sick because of that? I do not know. That I don't know. Right? But you have less protection here than you have here. So here... So here you can visualize the magnetic field out of the north into the south, out of the north, into the south, right? You can take the compass, and again, the compass will always be parallel. So here you see, it goes in this direction. It's always parallel to the magnetic field lines. Okay, so if for the test, I ask you, you know, an electric field is always out of plus into minus. It does not circulate if the charge is not moving, if it's electrostatics. But a magnetic field like to circulate. When you're going to translate that using calculus 3, you, you have some operator called circulation. So you will, you will have some circulation going on. OK, any question? Are we good? So at least you learn about Henry VIII. He was quite handsome when he was a young man, and and then and then he became like uh, ugly and really fat. But he he was quite quite handsome. I, I guess you don't you don't want to be around, of course. Henry VIII, and and his uh, daughter was quite smart. She never got married, right? <laughs> she didn't take a chance. So anyway. Uh, that will be the magnetic field. And you see that if you have a north and a south, you see the configuration looks very much like an uh, electric dipole. Remember, electric dipole, you have electric field going out of the plus into the minus. And here you have the same 
configuration. But you cannot have a magnetic monopole. It does not exist. If you find what, let me know and you get a Nobel Prize. I think you can have three people on the Nobel Prize. So please include me. Okay, don't forget. So here on north and the north, you see have the same configuration when it comes to uh, the electric field. If you have a minus and a minus, you see it's like repelling each other. The, the electric field is interactive with each other. It's like pushing away. And here the same thing. Magnetic field will behave the same, same way. The unit for magnetic field is called the Tesla. Uh, and I, I have a typo. Tesla, named after Nikola's Tesla, He's, he was a genius. He had a big, big fight with Thomas Edison. I don't know if you know the story. I, Thomas Edison was not a nice guy, okay? He was a businessman. He made a lot of money, but not the, the nicest guy. So he really hated Tesla. Tesla said that if you want to transport electricity, you need to use AC. That's what we use, so he was right. But Thomas Edison had another idea. He said, we have to use DC. And to convince people, you know, that he was right, what did he do? Right, you're right. He, he, he did something terrible. He electrocuted an elephant on, on TV. That's right. I, I think you can still find the video of that. Yeah. And, and you are right. He lost the argument. But after... After Tesla died, I think it's not not only he electrocuted elephants but dogs as well to convince people. See how electricity can be so dangerous if you have 120 volt, it can kill you. You know your kids will be electrocuted. So it was uh, scaring people. You know, and and some people get scared very easily. So anyway, uh, so but he at the end he was right. So here have, you have some value for magnetic field. So again, the unit is Tesla, uppercase T. The, the, the magnetic field of the Earth is 0 0.5 times 10 to the negative 4 Tesla. And because it's a common, common unit, we use that as the Gauss. So one Tesla is 10,000 Gauss. So the magnetic field of the Earth is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 Gauss. Okay, you you have magnetic field lines from from the Sun as well, and and the Sun is 10 to the negative two. All all the giant planets like Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, they all have magnetic field. We are the only rocky planet with a strong, relatively strong magnetic field. So it was designed to protect us. So it's very convenient. MRI, very dangerous stuff. Maybe we talk about MRI, very dangerous. Big, big, big uh, magnetic field. 1.5 Tesla is so strong that when you take an MRI, they will make sure you have no metal part. And I was teaching like pre-med students, there was this very famous accident that happened in New York. And it, it, it was very sad. So uh, MRI has a very, very strong magnetic field. And a technician had forgotten the fire extinguisher in the room, right? So the kid was, I know if he was like six years old or 12, year, 12 years old, you, you can Google the story, it happened in New York. So he was laying down in, in the MRI. The technician switched on the MRI, and the extinguisher was sucked in the MRI, like, shoom, like a projectile. And it killed the kid. So uh, since then, you know, they, they are very, very careful. OK, you want to make sure that nothing metallic is on you and no fire extinguisher. So it was a horrible accident. And they always give that example for people going into um, to be a technician that, that do M I hate MRI. Have you taken an MRI? Oh, it's such a horrible thing. And you have that noise, boom, boom, boom. Isn't that right? Like, and, and then I'm claustrophobic. So and then I get scared and say, oh, they forgot me today. I want to get out. It's, 
it's not a nice uh, experience. So MRI is a uh, is it is it raining? Oh, I didn't see it was supposed to rain today. So here is a application that comes from your book. You have all those animals, especially going into bio. I know some of you are in bio, uh, marine biology, right? So you have those lobsters that we have around Miami. And, and um, they, they were able to show that they have like uh, inside their head, they have like a magnet height, like a small magnet. So they can orient themselves according to the magnetic field of, of the earth and they don't get lost. So they go around the coast of Florida, for example. And they did something very mean to them. They, they brought a huge magnet to get them confused, just to show that they were using the magnetic field of the line. And instead of going to the coast, they got lost somewhere away from the coast. Isn't that mean to do that to lobsters? So you can, uh, you can read the article here. So it was some research. Birds, two birds have some kind of magnet in their head, so they, they follow the magnetic field of, of the earth, so they don't they can migrate. Yeah. It does it interact with what? Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. We we're gonna see that actually. We, we we're gonna but here I'm answering your question. Actually all the magnetic field can be explained by moving charge. So if you have a moving charge, so here we have electricity flowing. So electricity is flowing, so that means you have an electric field, right? Because it's the electric field that makes the charge flow from plus to minus, right? So you have a current, you have an electric field, that's going to make a magnetic field. So the source of magnetic fields is current or moving charge. And that was found in the beginning of the 19th century by a very famous experiment. But each time you have a magnetic field, it's explained because you have a moving charge. So why do we have magnetic field lines from the Earth? It's because inside the Earth, you have a solid core. So the, the, the inner core is solid, but the outer core is liquid because you don't have enough pressure to make it solid. And inside that outer core, you have moving ions, right? You have moving charge. And those moving charge is making a magnetic field. And the magnetic field always circulates. So electricity, which is an electric field, create a magnetic field. So what's the next question? If an electric field can create a magnetic field, then can a... Exactly. Can we do the opposite? Can we have electricity using a magnetic field? And the answer, that's how we have electricity today. And that was found by Michael Faraday. If you have a moving magnetic field, if you take a, mag a magnet and you move it, like through a loop, you're going to make electricity flowing. OK? So I'm, I'm going to stop here today. I, I took my time, but you have so, so much, so many applications. So you see here, it's an MRI. MRI use a huge magnetic field, and that's why it's uh, so dangerous. I, I have a pop quiz, you know. Uh, hopefully, I don't know. And I, 